Some individuals may never acknowledge their spiritual essence. I consistently emphasize that we are not solely human beings. We possess a spiritual dimension too. This is because the divine creator is a spirit. The physical form is merely a cloak of sand, veiling our true essence. During sleep, it is this authentic self that ventures into reality, leaving the physical form resting on the bed. When the Bible references God breathing life into man, consider that God bestowed upon you everything within his possession. He gifted you with his spirit and soul. We can perceive God as having a direct connection to the soul because his word is akin to the soul within humans. This is why Jesus proclaimed himself as our life, embodying the power and wisdom of God, as Christ is the manifestation of God's divine attributes. Just as humans are comprised of three elements, body, soul, and spirit, so too does God manifest through three distinct aspects, the body, the word, and the spirit. When Jesus walked the earth in human form, his disciples asked him, Lord, Show us the Father. Jesus responded, questioning how long he must be with them before they recognize that he embodies the Father, illustrating the profound unity and identity he shares with the divine. What Jesus intended to communicate to them was that in his human form, he was the very God who created heaven and earth. However, in the realm of the Spirit, no one has seen the Father except for Jesus, who is intimately united with the Father, illustrating the concept of God as a trinity, three in one. Now, allow me to provide you with an illustration about the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Let's use a clipper as an example. A clipper consists of three main components, the clipper blade, the clipper coil, and the adjustment mechanism. Each component serves its own distinct function within the clipper system. For instance, the coil is the essential part of the machine that generates power to drive the other components. In this illustration, we'll equate the coil to God himself, representing the foundational power source from which everything else operates. Similar to how a barber uses the blade to cut hair, without the blade, the clipper is unable to perform its function. This blade is likened to the Word of God acknowledged as the force behind the creation of everything on earth, as mentioned in John 1.3, which states that nothing was made without the Word. Now, considering the adjustment, it plays a crucial role in determining the length of the haircut by the clipper. It serves as the factor that dictates the extent of the clipper's impact. For instance, if I want to achieve a low cut, I rely on the adjustment to assist me in that area. The adjustment provides the guidance on how the hair should be cut, determining whether it will be low or not. In the context of the human body we're discussing, the adjustment is analogous to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit teaches us the ways of God and directs us, preventing us from falling into temptation. When God initiated the creation of the earth in Genesis 1-2, the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the water, providing direction before God uttered, Let there be light, and light emerged. These three entities are inseparable, working together and existing within God, as emphasized in 1 John 5-7. Much like the harmonious functioning of clipper components, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit collaborate seamlessly. This unity is echoed in Jesus' reference to himself as the Father who manifested in the flesh. Jesus, according to John 1.14, embodied God in the flesh, affirming that the Word of God took on human form and dwelt among us. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. 1 Timothy 3.16 We witness His glory as the unique Son of the Father. Throughout various passages in the Bible, Jesus is portrayed as eternally present with the Father, even before creation began. He was there when the earth was formless, and before the seas were brought into existence, always in joyful communion with the Father. This indicates that Jesus has been in the presence of the Father since the very inception of creation. 
It's crucial to grasp that everything came into existence through the divine utterance of God, and Jesus embodies that word, having taken on a human form. Colossians 1.15.18 reveals on this matter. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. Like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.